The runners at second and third, and nobody out in the eighth inning. Jackie Hyatt, the right-hand hitting catcher first baseman for the Giants, has just sacrificed Jim Hart moving to second base. So ninth inning, one out, Jim Hart at second base, Ollie Brown the batter. Ollie Brown wrecked the Pirates, you remember, yesterday. It's incredible. Do you realize that two teams play 162 games and wind up in this kind of a spot on the last day in the season? Unbelievable. Runners at second and third and nobody out here in the eighth inning. The Dodgers trying to hang on to a 3-2 to two lead. In the ninth inning, all we know as of the moment, Jim Hart at second, one out, Ollie Brown at the plate, Bob Barton on deck. Bob Barton now up there has the count of one ball and two strikes on him. Yeah, Ollie Brown with Bob Barton on deck. The one and two, the count to Ollie Brown at Forbes Field, Pittsburgh. Hard at second base representing the tying run. Hard walked, Hyatt sacrificed, and Ollie Brown is up there. Ollie put on a tremendous show in that first game yesterday. He had doubled and homered and also made a circus catch to end the game. Now he's up there in the spotlight in the ninth inning today. Regan is still warming up, so we have a chance to watch by way of Western Union ticker what's going on at Forbes Field. Grote, Rojas, and Dalrymple are due up against Regan. All right, Dick Grote will be the batter. First base open. And they will pitch to him. The infield up on the right side. And now they're going to walk him, all right. So four wide ones to go to load the bases. And Cookie Rojas will be the batter. So the Dodgers leading three to two. And the Phillies have loaded the bases with nobody out in the eighth inning. Would you... <laughs> Would you believe that the ribbon on the Western Union machine giving us reports from Pittsburgh is running so thin we're having trouble reading it now? Would you believe that for suspense? Now we just about barely read it. Ollie Brown has popped up. There are two outs in the ninth inning. Two outs in the ninth at Forbes Field. The Pirates leading three to two. The Giants have the tying run in hard at second base. The batter due up is Bob Barton, if we can ever read that tape properly. Barton is due up. Meanwhile, Rojas is up here with the bases loaded. And Ossie Virgil will now come up and bat for Bob Barton. Boy, what a way it would be for the Dodgers who are in such terrible trouble now to get a favorable report out of Pittsburgh. They'd go wild and wouldn't care about the Phillies and the bases loaded. But they got to care right now as Ossie Virgil batting for Bob Barton, two out in the ninth inning. All right, here's Rojas with the bases loaded. Regan delivers as a ground ball at the third. Schofield to Roseboro for... No, he's off the base. The run is over. Schofield, fielding the ball, had the perfect force at the plate, and his throw was to the right of the plate. And so Roseboro, in lunging to backhand the throw, came off the bag. So Schofield gets an error. The bases remain loaded. The score, of course, is tied 3-3. Ossie Virgil has just singled to score Jim Hart and tie it up in Forbes Field. Would you believe it? The Giants are tied in Pittsburgh 
And the Dodgers are tied here in Philadelphia. Foul ball by Clay Dalrymple. Davenport has grounded out, so the Pirates will be coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning, all even, three and three. The Dodgers now are really scrambling. A ground ball to Schofield and a bad throw for a run to tie it up. Ducky getting the error. And now Regan working on Dalrymple. Still nobody out, remember. A 3-3 tie in the eighth inning with White, Grode, and Rojas out on the line. Strike one pitch is popped in the air to shallow center. That's going to be trouble. It drops in. White will score. Stopping at second base is Grote, and the Phillies lead four to three. Clayton Dalrymple with the infield up, pop one into shallow center for a base hit. The Phillies moving one base at a time, so the bases remain loaded. Nobody out. Two big errors, one by Miller when he threw the ball into center field, and the other even bigger by Schofield on a bad throw to the plate. And here is Chris Short leading four to three. The infield has to play up with nobody out, and the pitch to Short, a strike. The Giants and Pirates are even 3-3 in the bottom of the ninth, and the Phillies are leading the Dodgers 4-3 in the bottom of the eighth. Nobody out, Chris Short, with the bases loaded at the plate. Just strike one pitch, swung on and missed, strike two. You know who ought to cover this race? Science fiction magazines. Short waiting 0-2. Regan checking with Roseboro. Phil ready, strike two pitch, low, ball one. Here in the inning, Allen started with a high chopper down towards second. Lefevre desperately charging the ball, but it didn't come up and went for a base hit. Then White bunts, and Miller throws it into center field, so with runners at second and third, they walk road. Rojas hit to Schofield, who made a bad throw to pull Roseboro off the plate. And then a pop fly single for another run, and it's 4-3 Philadelphia. The pitch is swung on and missed, strike three for Chris Short. That's the first out. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. 50,000 watt clear channel station, KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony Incorporated. Jesse Gonder, opening up the bottom of the ninth inning for Pittsburgh, has just grounded out. So Gonder, the pitcher spot, and Matty Alou do up in that order. And Gonder has grounded out, one away in the ninth inning. Here is Johnny Briggs, left-hand hitter, good speed, and he has homered and singled. Regan delivers, Briggs swings, ground ball to the fever. He goes to Roseboro for a force at the plate. John doing a toe dance to make sure that left foot was on the rubber. So he kicked home plate twice. Force at the plate with growth cut down, four to two. Everybody else moving up. So you have Briggs at first, Dalrymple at second, and Rojas at third. And the batter, Tony Gonzalez. The Dodgers committing three errors today, two of them here in the eighth inning, and both of the errors in the eighth inning very big. When the Dodgers hit in the ninth, and they're down by a run, remember, they have Parker, Regan, Spot, and Wills. All right, here is Gonzalez. Walked twice, grounded out, and singled. He's one for two. And now Tony tired of waiting, backs out. Two out on the eighth. Four to three, Philadelphia. And another thin gray line of Dodgers battling to win a pennant on the final day of the year in Connie Mack Stadium. 
The pitch to Gonzalez. A high fly ball into shallow right. Fairley's there. Sunglasses glistening. Waiting and makes the catch for the out. But the Phillies enjoy a big inning and get two runs on two hits. Two very big errors and three men left. And at the end of eight, the Phillies four, the Dodgers three. Jerry, there have been some dandies, but uh, this one's really something. Say, you know, there are a lot of good premium gasoline, but here in the West, we think Union Oil has the edge with Royal 76. For Royal 76 is powerful enough to make a difference. The difference in power comes from blending at the refinery. And Union Oil blends eight different fuels into Royal 76, creating a premium that's powerful enough to make a difference. Each fuel in the blend contributes to the total power of Royal 76, to mileage power, getaway power, and to the power you get from a clean, knock-free engine. And like all major premiums, Royal 76 contains platform 8, the mileage ingredient. So get a tank full of Royal 76 at your nearest Union Oil service station. Once you start with Royal 76, you'll come back regularly for the sign of the 76, for the gasoline that's powerful enough to make a difference. Chris Short, as the fates have decreed, is now three outs away from posting his 20th victory. Short is 19 and 10, two and three with the Dodgers, 17 and eight lifetime. Chris came in in relief with his club trailing, so he now leads 4-3 in the ninth. The Dodgers will have Wes Parker, Tommy Davis, and Maury Wills. The Western Union ticker tape and the ribbon has slowed us down a little bit. The last we heard was Gonder grounded out. Well, somebody's on first base at Forbes Field. We're sorry to do this, but uh, the machine has given us a bad time. Parker, a fly ball to center. Briggs is there to make the catch, and he was fighting the sun all the way. A tough play for the center fielder, and he went into a crouch to catch it. Gene Alley has singled Matty Alou to third base. Now, Gonda made the first out, so I assume that whoever batted for the pitcher, well, let's put it this way, there must be two out, with Alou at third and Alley at first. Manny Mota is up there with a chance to win it right now, with two out, runners at first and third, 3-3 three, three in the bottom of the ninth. Gee, we're sorry to be a little sketchy. Gonda grounded out, and then the machine went haywire. Then we found out that Alou was on first base, and we just see now that Ali has singled him to third. So it'll be head-to-head -head Manny Mota and Lindy McDaniel over there. Meanwhile, Tommy Davis is at the plate, hitting for the Dodgers. Tom waiting, short, ready, and delivers. Fastball, a strike, 1-1. One, one. Tommy Davis batting 3-14. One one to count to Tommy Davis. Mode at the plate at Forbes Field with runners at first and third and two out in the ninth. All even three three with the Giants. Short looks in to get a sign. Tom Davis waiting in the strike one pitch. Fastball is popped in the air to shallow right. Coming in is Gonzalez, shielding his eyes and makes the catch. Two out, and Maury Wills the batter. Manny Mota at Pittsburgh has a count of two balls and one strike on him, with runners at first and third and two out. The Dodgers are trailing four to three in the ninth inning. They are one out away from going down the drain in this first of two games. Meanwhile, the Pirates are trying to knock off the Giants and end it. Wills. 
singled and then grounded out three times. Now the count to Motive, three balls and one strike. And now, ball four. The bases are loaded. Roberto Clemente is at the plate. Ninth inning, two out, a 3-3 tie at Forbes Field. Maury Wills at the plate. Shorts, fastball is high, ball one. Here are the Dodgers, one out away from losing, or are they? It depends. It depends on Roberto Clemente. Bases loaded, two out, bottom of the ninth. Clemente at the plate, a 3-3 tie as Wills takes low, ball two. The lights have been turned on here in the ninth inning at Connie Mack Stadium. This is the first of two games. Whether we really have a second game or not depends in Pittsburgh. The pitch to Maury Wills is fouled away. The Phillies led two to nothing. The Dodgers led three to two. The Phillies lead four to three in the ninth with two out on the bases empty. The first pitch to Clemente, ball one. Oh, can you hear that 33,000 at Forbes Field right now? Time called for a moment, two and one to count to Maury Wills. The scoreboard had it backwards and Ed Bargo out to change it. Next one, a strike to Clemente, so the count one and one to Clemente. Wills hits a drive down the right field line, slicing as Gonzalez comes racing over and one hands it in the corner for the out. So the Phillies have won, but we got to wait a minute. We're not going anywhere. We're going to stay right here and find out about Clemente in Pittsburgh. The Dodgers are still in the dugout as Dick Stewart with the headphones on and as soon as we get word, boys, we'll tell you, we're not going to leave you now. Everybody watching our Western Union machine, because the Dodgers could still come up smelling like roses. It depends on Clemente. Clemente has grounded out. So the ninth inning is over. And they're going to go into the tenth inning at Forbes Field with the ball game even three and three. Meanwhile, this first game is over, and for Philadelphia, four runs, eight hits, and no errors. For the Dodgers, three runs, five hits, and three errors. The Phillies, by winning, have now won five of the eight played here at Connie Mack Stadium. They have won seven of the 17 overall with the Dodgers. And, of course, there is another game to follow. How important the second game is depends entirely on the outcome at Pittsburgh. If the Giants win that game, then the Dodgers must really bear down to win their game. If the Giants lose that game in Pittsburgh, the Dodgers can just have a workout in the second game here. So the Dodgers let one get away and, in essence, threw it away on two throwing errors, one by Bob Miller and the other by Dick Schofield in the eighth inning. The Phillies four runs, eight hits and no errors. The Dodgers three runs, five hits and three errors. Larry Jackson, Darrell Knowles and Chris Short. And for the Dodgers, Don Drysdale, Ron Paranoski, Bob Miller and Phil Regan. Miller is the losing pitcher. And Chris Short, the winning pitcher, so Chris has won 20. He winds up the year beating the Dodgers twice to give him 20 and 10, 17 and 8 lifetime. We have a decision to make because normally in between games of a doubleheader, you would just say, well, we'll be back a little bit later on and we'd go have a cup of coffee and you'd hear some records and music and news. But since we are in direct control and in touch with Forbes Field Pittsburgh, I don't think it would be too fair to spend the 15 or 20 minutes just sitting here having coffee while you folks are up in the air wondering about what's going on at Pittsburgh. So we will sit here a while and give you up-to-the-minute reports out of Forbes Field. In that game, just to go back and tell you about the scoring, in the second inning, in the bottom of the second inning, Don Clendenin tripled off the light standard in left center field at Forbes Field, a tremendous shot. Bill Mazeroski bounced out to the shortstop Tito Fuentes 
and Clem Denon scored. So it was one to nothing Pittsburgh. Then the Giants came up in the third inning. Tito Fuentes flied out to Roberto Clemente. Jesus Alou single to center. Matty Alou bobbled the ball for an error with Jesus Alou going to second base. Willie Mays back there in the third inning then hit his 37th home run of the year to make it two to one in favor of the Giants. In the bottom of the third inning Matty Alou led off and lined a single to left field. Gene Alley then topped the ball up along third base. Jim Hart charged it, picked it up, threw wild to first, allowing Alley to go to second and Alou to third, with Alley getting credit for a single and Hart drawing the error. That brought up Manny Mota. He topped the ball up along third. Again, Hart charged. Again, he threw wildly for an error, allowing Mota to go to second, Alley to third as Alou scored. That tied it up. It brought up Roberto Clemente, and they walked him intentionally. And Don Clendenin came up with one out and the bases loaded. Hit into a double play with Gene Alley scoring. And then Mazeroski flied out to win the inning. So the Pirates went out in front three to two. And then the Giants in the ninth inning had Jim Hart walk, Jackie Hyatt sacrificed, Ollie Brown popped out, and with two out on the tying run at second base for the Giants, Ossie Virgil batted for Bob Barton and singled to drive in Hart and tie it up. In the bottom of the ninth inning, the Pirates made a charge at the Giants and Lindy McDaniel, loaded the bases with two out, and it brought up, of all people, the fellow who was so high in the running for MVP honors, Roberto Clemente. But Clemente grounded out to end the ninth inning. So the Giants are up in the tenth inning. I think Jimmy Davenport would lead it off in the tenth inning, all even three and three. And we'll see if we just can't walk over where the ticker is and read it right off. The pitcher spot was up first. Lindy McDaniel, he flied out to Manny Mota in left center. Then Tito Fuentes grounded out Gene Alley to Don Clendenin. And that brought up Jesus Alou, who singled a right center field for at least his second hit of the day. That brought up Willie Mays. Mays earlier had hit his 37th home run of the year. Mays flied to Roberto Clemente in right field. So the Giants, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left in the top of the 10th. So in the bottom of the 10th inning, the Pirates will be coming up, and since Clemente made the last out, the Pirates will have Don Clendenin, Bill Mazeroski, and Jose Pagan. Pagan went in to play third base for Bob Bailey in the eighth inning. So they're in the bottom of the 10th, all even three and three at Forbes Field, Pittsburgh, and we're gonna stay right here and find out about it. And of course, the Dodgers down in the clubhouse are glued to the radio, hoping that they can just have a workout in the second game. It'll be up to Pittsburgh to determine that. There were other games played today, and there are other games in progress. But I think you realize how busy we have been today watching this game and the one in Pittsburgh, so our reports on the other games are sketchy. What we do have, Houston, New York, with Houston leading the Mets six to one in the eighth inning back of Chris Zachary in the first of two games. Atlanta, Cincinnati are scoreless in the sixth, Reed and Ellis. Chicago and St. Louis are scoreless in the fourth, Ellsworth and Cosman. In the American League, Baltimore leading Minnesota six to two in the seventh inning. Jim Cott from Minnesota and Steve Barber started that game for Baltimore. Barber, of course, hoping to get a crack at the World Series. New York, Chicago, the Yankees leading the White Sox two to nothing in the seventh inning. That would be Al Downing against Boyo. 
Kansas City leading Detroit 7 to 2 in the sixth inning Hunter and Padres Roof and McCall of home runs so you're right up to date on all the other scores meanwhile we're here sitting in the booth at Connie Mack Stadium Philadelphia our game is over the Phillies won it 4 to 3 to keep the pennant race alive for the Giants Meanwhile, the Pirates are doing everything humanly possible to knock off the Giants and end it. But just as the Pirates scrambled and won a Twilight Night doubleheader to keep them alive, then yesterday in the rain and gloom, the Giants scrambled to win a doubleheader. And then today, the Giants have scrambled to get even with a base hit by Ossie Virgil to drive in a tying run with two out in the ninth inning. So the Pirates are up now in the bottom of the tenth. Don Clendenin, Bill Mazeroski, and Bob Bailey are the batters. Clendenin hit a sharp ground ball to Tito Fuentes, who threw to first base for the out. So there's one away, and the batter now is Bill Mazeroski. Earlier in the game, Mazeroski, we do know, had a double in that game. So Mazeroski to batter, one out in the bottom of the 10th inning, a 3-3 tie. Wild. Incredible. What really is amazing, you realize all these clubs go to spring training at the same time in February. They all work out. The squads are pruned and cut. And now they go to work, and where are they? Well, in the Keystone State, at 20 minutes after 4, they are completely up in the air on the final day of the season. Bill Mazeroski takes the first one, low ball one. Lindy McDaniel, of course, low ball pitcher, fork ball, keeps another one down and away, ball two. With a count two and zero oh to Mazeroski, the next pitch is a strike, and the count two and one. One out in the tenth, Mazeroski at the plate. Jose Pagan finishing up the game at third base for Bailey is on deck. Mazeroski with a count two and one. It's a line drive base hit to left field. So Mazeroski comes up with at least his second hit of the day. He's standing at first with one out, and that will bring up Jose Pagan. Bob Bailey was in there. He started the game, but Pagan took over in the eighth inning when the Pirates were out in front. Pagan, a better fielder. Remember, it was Jose Pagan who made the game-saving play in the first game of the Twilight Night doubleheader here at Connie Mack Stadium. When Dick Grote came up, and from all intents, and they tell us, hit a ball back of the bag and going down the line, and Pagan made a great backhand stop and threw Grote out to end the game. The Pirates won that game 2-1, to one, got a big lift, and went on to win the nightcap. Well, Jose Pagan is right there in the middle of the stage with the spotlight on him in the bottom of the 10th inning at Forbes Field. There's over 33,000 at Forbes Field. They wound up drawing a million one hundred and ninety thousand for the year at Pittsburgh. And right now the Pirates battling for second place money. The Giants, of course, battling to stay alive in the pennant race. Jose Pagan, a right hand batter, comes up with a two sixty five average, and the first pitch is low, ball one. One and oh. So Mazeroski standing at first base, held on by Hyatt with one out in the 10th inning, and the game tied 3-3. Gaylord Perry pitched a strong game, as did Bob Veal, but Perry went out for a pinch hitter, Cap Peterson, and Lindy McDaniel is pitching. Pagan as we try to make out this report coming out of Pittsburgh. Well, I'll tell you what it says, and then we're trying to figure it out. Pagan hit a hard ball that Alou appeared to have at the scoreboard. That would be in left field. Mazeroski had the hole thinking it would be caught, and I assume the ball was dropped by Alou. How Alou got to the scoreboard, which is in straightaway left field, is questionable, but uh, that's what they say, Matty Alou. That would be a Jesus Alou, dropped the ball. So Jesus Alou apparently went to the scoreboard, dropped the fly ball hit by Mazeroski. Mazeroski went to third base, Pagan to second. 
All right, we'll try now that we've got it, I think, unraveled. With Mazeroski at first, Pagan hit a drive to left. Jesus Alou went back to the scoreboard and dropped it. Since the ball appeared to have been caught, Mazeroski held, then moved over to third, and Pagan went to second. Okay, the error charge to Alou to put runners at second and third in the tenth inning. With one out, the left-hand hitting Jesse Gonder, the batter, and Gonder is now intentionally walked. He is hitting eighth in the lineup. Gene Michael, big rangy shortstop, will run for Gonda. Jerry Lynch is the batter. So I see some of the Dodgers in the dugout now listening, and as soon as it comes over, boys, we'll let you know. Jesus Salou has dropped a fly ball to make second and third. An intentional walk has loaded the bases with one out, and Jerry Lynch, the batter. So... Jerry Lynch is going to be the one to settle it, it would seem. The giant infield must play up. Lynch, of course, one of the game's great pinch hitters, holds the major league record for pinch hit home runs at 17. Jerry has not hit much for a, an average, 218. Lynch, the batter, with one out. The base is loaded. And Lynch hit up pop fly into shallow left field. Jesus Alou caught the ball. The runner's holding. So two out. The bases remain loaded in the bottom of the tenth. I mean it. I'm not making this up. And Matty Alou will be the batter. So Jesus Alou drops a fly ball to put the Giants in trouble. And now Matty Alou is going to try and finish him off. That bottom of the tenth must have been something. With one out, Mazeroski singled. Pagan hit a fly ball to left that was dropped by Jesus Alou to put runners at second and third. Gonda was walked intentionally. Lynch hit for the pitcher and hit a pop fly into shallow left. The runners holding, and here is Matty Alou. Philippe Alou did not play in the tough pennant race. He was out with a broken finger when the Pirates were there. But the Alou boys are certainly prominent now in this one. Herman Franks talking to his infield right now at the mound. So the ball game and the pennant race is on the line at Forbes Field. Two out, the bases loaded. And Matty Alou, the batter. We are trying to described in pantomime to Preston Gomez and Jeff Torborg and several others about who's the hitter out there at Forbes Field. It is Matty Alou. Alou started the day at 338. All right, they're ready to pitch, and the first one is low, ball one. Jim Hart, of course, plays up inside the bag on the edge of the grass. Matty Alou earlier had bounced one over Hart's head for a base hit. The pitch now to Matty Alou is a line drive foul outside of third base and down the left field line. And the count one ball and one strike to Matty Alou. It is 25 minutes after four here on a Sunday in Philadelphia. And the Dodgers in the dressing room are trying to figure out if it is the end of their working day or not. Matty Alou hit a ground ball to second baseman Jimmy Davenport who threw the first for the out and the Pirates blow a big chance to end it so the Giants will be coming up in the 11th inning and that ball game is still tied three and three an incredible 10 Mazeroski a single with one out then Pagan's fly ball dropped by Jesus Alou to put runners at second and third. The intentional walk to Gonder. And then, when all they needed was a fly ball, pinch hitter Jerry Lynch, the best he could do was a little pop fly for the second out in shallow left field. And then Matty Alou grounded out. So the Giants, barely off the hook, but off the hook they are. And they'll be coming up in the 11th inning. Gee, this in a sense, you know, Philadelphia has always figured prominently 
And just going back to the 1949 game when the Dodgers had to win it, the crowd reacting as they show it's still a tie score. And now Sandy Koufax is going to have to start to warm up. We are staying here because of the importance, naturally, of the Western Union report out of Forbes Field. But the Pirates had the bases loaded in the ninth inning and Clemente made out. And they had the bases loaded in the tenth inning and Lynch and Alou made out without getting a run over. So that means that the Pirates have had three at-bats twice with the bases loaded and unable to score. So the Dodgers will at least start in earnest. They have to look upon this second game as a do-or-die game. They can't relax hoping that the Pirates will do the job for them. So it'll be the best they have. And for the Phillies, the best they have. Right-handed Jim Bunning. For the Pirates now, as they go to the 11th inning, Steve Blass will pick up and do the pitching. It is 3-3 in the 11th inning. Apparently, on the fly ball, Jesus Alou went to the scoreboard and dropped it. Normally, Mazeroski might even have scored on the ball, but of course he figured it was going to be caught, and the best he could do is go to third. That, of course, a tremendous play. Jim Hart opens up with Jim Paglioni behind the plate and Steve Blass on the mound, and Hart has lined a single to center field. That would bring up first baseman Jackie Hyatt. That is to say, it might bring up Hyatt, but with Blass pitching, we'll see. Willie McCovey has not made an appearance in the game yet. Steve Blass has won 11 and lost six. Chris Short got his wish. He started the first game of the series and won his 19th against the Dodgers. He relieved in the first game of this doubleheader and won his 20th. Now, Jim Bunning will get his choice appointment of going after his 20th against the Dodgers in the second game. Sandy Koufax trying to go for win number 27. The Dodgers hoping that Sandy would never have to work this second game, but there he is, loosening up. In the first game, Drysdale started and allowed two runs in the first inning. The Dodgers got three in the sixth on a walk, a single, and a home run by Ron Fairley. But in the bottom of the eighth inning, an infield single, a sacrifice, an error by Bob Miller, and then the Phillies took the lead and won the game four to three. Willie McCovey hit for Jackie Hyatt and just hit a home run. And the Giants have taken the lead of five to three. So Willie McCovey batting for Jackie Hyatt. McCovey hitting 293. He hit the home run over the exit gate in deep right center field. That's a tremendous shot at Forbes Field, Pittsburgh. So McCovey makes his first appearance and promptly unravels the ball game with a two-run home run. So the Pirates are down 5-3. The Giants are still hitting in the ninth, and that means this second ball game, the Dodgers apparently must win it if the Giants can hold on to that lead. Well, the first thing we will do here in the radio booth is clear the air, clear the decks for action for the second game. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. Your World Series action on KFI Los Angeles. We have been sitting here watching the Western Union ticker bring us sketchy reports of what's going on at Forbes Field, Pittsburgh. So we have just stayed on the air in between games. All the proceedings today, as every day throughout the year, sent to you with the best wishes of the Union Oil Company of California, Security First National Bank, and Southern California Chevrolet dealers. The Union Oil Company and Security Bank brought you the first game, and the Union Oil Company and Southern California Chevrolet dealers will bring you the second game. Sandy Koufax and Jim Bunning are loosening up right now. Koufax 
26 and 9, 2 and 1 record against the Phillies, 21 and 8 lifetime. Jim Bunning is 19 and 13, 1 and 1 against the Dodgers, 2 and 4 lifetime. Bunning beat Drysdale and the Dodgers 5 to 1, lost to Drysdale and the Dodgers 6 to 1. And the one time he went against Colfax, he went 12 innings. Neither man had a decision after 11. And Bunning's replacement was the losing pitcher. So Sandy Colfax, who won his 26th game to give the Dodgers the pennant on October the 2nd, one year ago, will now try and go out and win his 27th game on October the 2nd to give the Dodgers the pennant in 1966. Jerry was down in the Dodger dressing room all during the intermission. And I was wondering, as Jerry comes in the booth, uh, Jerry, could the boys get reports out of Forbes Field? And what was the reaction? What was the dressing room like? Vinny, they were listening to you oh. on our little FM here. That's too and bad because it was sketchy report. Yeah, and they have FM in the, uh, in the dressing room there. And just about the time they got the bases full, our little FM here started to fade out. And we were all just crowded around the radio listening. And I think they were just kind of sitting around in a state of shock, just uh, pulling. And they wanted, when the pinch hitter was announced, and you said, Michaels, they said, let's have Lynch. And they were just all excited about trying to help the Pirates manage that ball game a little bit. And then uh, I left before the home run report, so I don't know what the reaction was on the home run. Walter Austin was making up a lineup that would be of all of the kids. But I think you'll have to tear that up now, I guess. I also wonder, since the Dodgers in the first game saw a right hand to Larry Jackson, we would assume they would go with just about the same lineup in the second game. Uh, we see Lou Johnson and Dick Schofield and Ron Fairley loosening up right now. So unless we hear otherwise, I would think that would be the club that takes the field. What a day. Our little FM radio conking out in the dressing room, the ribbon on the Western Union machine going out as we're trying to get reports. What a day. Incredible. <laughs> Vinny, I don't know. Uh, they were certainly, uh, the Dodgers were uh, really pirate fans all of a sudden there. But it was just uh, incredible the way things went. Go you ahead. said incredible. Now, here's another addition to it. We told you McCovey hit the two-run home run. Okay. The batter then... Ollie Brown single to right. Jimmy Davenport, who came into the game for Lanier, was at the plate, but Bob Barton should have been the hitter, or at least the catcher. And Ollie Brown at first base as Davenport came up. Davenport fouled a couple of pitches back to the screen. And the report tells me that Herman Franks came out to talk to Mel Steiner about the fact that Davenport was hitting out of turn. Now, Ossie Virgil came out and assumes the count on Davenport and Virgil fly to Clemente and Wright. So the radio conked out, the ribbon conked out, the Giants have hit out of order, but now Davenport is up again and he got a base hit. Oh, this is, this is a joke. There are people in Mars sending this one out here. Davenport single, Brown to second base and Lindy McDaniel is the batter. It's five to three, Giants. We know that much in the 11th inning as Willie McCovey pinch hit for Jackie Hyatt and hit a two-run home run after the Pirates had apparently had it made. With one out and a runner at first, Pagan hit a fly ball dropped by Jesus Alou to put runners at second and third. Gondo has walked intentionally. Lynch a pop fly for the second out. Matty Alou grounded out. In the last two innings, the Pirates have had the bases loaded. With Clemente at the plate, he couldn't get the run over. And with Lynch and Alou at the plate, they couldn't get the run over. The Pirates now trailing, and they must really feel they're done. Jerry? Many, uh, you know, there's a lot at stake over there, too, because it's... Uh, it's uh... Something like uh, $1,000 per man over in uh, Pittsburgh, at least to the Pirates. So they're putting on a pretty good battle to wind up second place. Not only the money, but the prestige of finishing second. And uh, they certainly are really feeling it there, I'm sure. Well, just to look ahead, Matty Alou made the last hour right. in the bottom of the 10th. So when the Pirates come up, whenever they do come up in the 11th, they will have Gene Alley, Manny Moda, and Roberto Clemente. But with runners, uh, batters batting out of turn for the Giants, McCovey a pinch hit home run. Well, this has got to be one of the wildest days in the history of the game. 
Benny McDaniel struck out, so that wound it up for a minute. All right. I guess Lindy's... Clemente will probably hit a home run to tie the game or something, don't you? Lindy's got a pitch to Gene Alley, Manny Mota, Roberto Clemente in the bottom of the 11. Just listening to the public address man uh, give the lineup. Jimmy Lefever batting fifth at second base. So it looks like the Dodgers will have the same lineup. We'll wonder about Roseboro as to whether he's going to go both games behind the plate. But remember when Chris Short pitched in the first game of the series, Roseboro went all the way. And then John was rested yesterday when it rained. And now we get the announcement that Roseboro will bat seventh behind the plate and West Parker hitting eighth and Sandy Colfax on the mound. So the Dodger lineup is the same. Maury Wills at short. Dick Schofield at third. Willie Davis in center field. Ron Fairley in the cleanup spot in right. Jimmy Lefevre at second base. Lou Johnson in left field. Johnny Roseboro hitting seventh. Wes Parker hitting eighth and Sandy Colfax the batter. Gene Mark with Osteen, uh, with uh, Sandy Kopacz going for the Dodgers, will apparently have the same lineup that started against Claude Osteen. That would mean Jackie Brandt to lead it off. Then Brandt in center, Cookie Rojas in left field. Now Cookie Rojas is going to go into right field, apparently. Dick Groat will hit third and play shortstop. And Richie Allen will be in the cleanup spot at third base. Harvey Keene will be at first base. Oh, so they're going to put Harvey in left field. He played first against Osteen. He'll play left field against Kofax. Tony Taylor will play second base. And Bill White is going to play against the left-hander. White will be at first base. Bob Uca, the catcher, and Chris Short, the pitcher. Jerry might want to give the records of the pitchers now. All right, Vinny. Jim Bunning has won 19 games and lost 13, has a one and one record against the Dodgers this season and two and four lifetime. Sandy Koufax has won 26 and lost nine and has a two and one record against the Phillies this season and 21 and eight lifetime. He started four times against the Phillies this season, winning six to one, losing four to nothing, winning 11 to one and getting no decision in 11 innings. So Koufax, who has won 26 against Bunning, who is trying to win 20 after Chris Short won his 20th in the first game of the doubleheader. And boy, that was a wild one. And of course, the Dodger errors led to their downfall in that first ball game. So Bunning now completing his warm-up tosses. And as Vinny gave them to you, the batting orders for the Dodgers, Wills, Schofield, Willie Davis, Fairley, Lefevre, Johnson, Roseboro, Parker, and Koufax. And for the Phillies, it will be Brant in center, Rojas in right, Grote at short, Allen at third, and Keene in left field. At second base, Tony Taylor, Bill White at first, Dow Ripple catching, and on the mound, Bunning to do the pitching. Time to play ball, Vinny. More action, and away we go. Second game, and this could be it. All right. One other report out of Forbes Field. Remember, Davenport had batted out of turn, but they caught him while the count was still on him. Ossie Virgil then resumed the count. Davenport then came up for a second time in single. Tito Fuentes has doubled off the left field wall to drive in two more. So the Giants have broken that game wide open and now lead 7-3 to three in the 11th inning. The Dodgers are going to have to do it themselves. Will swings and doesn't get it on one. They're going to have to do it against one of the better pitchers in the game, right-hander Jim Bunning and Sandy Colfax, trying to do it on two days rest. Maury Wills, the batter, 0-1 the count, as we start on this incredible day. Remember there was a movie during the, about the Marines on Guadalcanal listening to the World Series and the radio conking out? Well, that happened to the Dodgers in the dressing room today. Wills takes another strike, going to. Radio began to fade. Then our, our Western Union ribbon conked out on us, so we lost contact for a moment. 
And then the Giants batted out of turn, so it's it's been some day. 0-2 to Maury Wills. Bunning into his windup and Jim delivers. Fastball outside, ball one, one and two. When the Giants finished that game in Pittsburgh, and they're leading 7-3 now in the top of the 11th inning. When the Giants finish, they can't make a move. All they can do is sit in the clubhouse and wait to find out about this one, really. Here's the one-two pitch to Maury Wills. Ground foul outside of third. If the Giants win that game, and it looks like they will, the Dodgers must win this game to settle it today. If the Dodgers lose this second game while the Giants win, then the Giants go to play Cincinnati tomorrow and no doubt face Jim Bunning. The Dodgers will go home tonight no matter what. Here's the one-two pitch to Maury Wills. Outside, ball two, two and two. Two and two, the count to Maury Wills. Bunning, 19 game winner, looks into Bob Euchre to get his sign. Now ready in the 2 2 pitch on the corner, strike three call. Will stays at the plate to talk to Doug Harvey for a moment and now walks away. And the batter, Dick Schofield. Will still talking to Doug Harvey, but now he turns and walks away. Now here's Dick Schofield. He was vitally involved in the first game. He takes a strike. Schofield, with the bases loaded, had a ground ball hit to him and a play at the plate. But he made a bad throw, pulling Roseboro off the plate, and the tying run scored. White right down on top of him. Koufax had a full chop, trying to chop the ball on the infield and make the third baseman handle the ball. It was not a bunt. All right, Sandy Koufax, waiting now. Here's the stretch, the look, and the pitch on the way to Sandy. High and inside with a curve. Hit the inside corner for a strike, and it is one and two. Koufax didn't like to call. He backs out, talks to Harvey. Each umpire, of course, have different manners, and mannerisms behind the plate, and Harvey gives you a strike call very slowly and very deliberately, so we'll have to wait a little bit on him. One ball, two strikes to Koufax. The Dodgers had the leadoff man on in the second, now have the leadoff man on in the third. Koufax at bat. Here's the stretch now, the look, and the pitch on the way. Swung on and missed, strike three. Koufax strikes out. Maury Wills comes up now. That's three strikeouts for Jim Bunning. We're in the third inning. All right, here's Wills. Struck out his first time up. Schofield on deck. He also struck out. Big Jim Bunning trying to get his 20th win of the year and throw the National League pennant race into a real snarl as if it hasn't been in one already. One out, one on, Parker at second base. Here's the pitch to Wills. Looped along the left field line, foul. Down in the left field corner. Moore will come back to try it again. Strike one the count. Well, a lot of wild things went on in that ball game in Pittsburgh today. But it wound up 7-3 to three in favor of the Giants, who swept the series of won six in a row and are alive in the pennant race right now. As the Dodgers play their last game, the Giants have one left on the schedule if it is needed. If the Dodgers lose, they will play tomorrow in Cincinnati. The Giants will against the Reds. And probably we'll see Jim Maloney. We'll wait and see. Here's the pitch to Maury. Outside for a ball, and the count is one and one to Wills. One ball, one strike count. Wills at bat. All right, Maury, waiting at the plate. 
The Dodgers, of course, can do no worse than tie in the race. That was assured yesterday when the Giants beat the Pirates in two. Now the look on the pitch to Morey. Swollen looped along the left field line. Coming in fast for it is Keene. Near the line, makes the catch for the out. So Wills pop fly to Keene in short left field. Two down, and the batter will be Dick Schofield. Schofield struck out his first time up. Batting from the left side. All right, one out. Schofield waiting. Now Jim Bunning checking signs. Schofield batting second in the order. In the first game, the Dodgers had a big three-run homer by Ron Fairley. There's a bouncer foul outside of first, and it is strike one. Danny Ozark makes a bare hand catch. Nothing and one the count with two outs. Third inning. All right, Schofield waits. Parker walked and stole second. Now Bunning ready again. Here's the look in the pitch. Taken outside for a ball. One and one to Schofield. One ball, one strike. Schofield waiting. First game, the winning pitcher was Chris Short, who has won two games in the series and got his 20th of the year. Bob Miller was the loser in relief for the Dodgers. One ball, one strike. Now the look, and here's the pitch to Schofield. Ground ball back to the middle, behind second. Goes through, base hit. Here's Parker. He scores. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Dick Schofield guided one through the middle. Over the mound, just under the glove of Dick Grote, and on into center field. So the walk is cashed in, and the Dodgers are out in front. Parker walks, stole second. Schofield singles him home. Here's Willie Davis. Willie coming up, grounded out, pitcher to first, his first time up. On deck, Ron Fairley. All right, Grote couldn't quite get to the ball. It had eyes went right through in the center. Grote is limping a little bit at shortstop after that try. On at first is Schofield. Two outs in the third. An ex-giant, Dick Schofield, drives in a run. It's a long drive for right field. Going, going. Willie Davis has it, a home run. <laughs> Willie D hit one over the right field fence, no doubt about it, with a crack of the bat. And the Dodgers are out in front, three to nothing, and the Dodger bench jumping with joy now. Willie Davis driving one over the right field wall to score Schofield ahead of him, three to nothing Dodgers, as Ron Fairley comes up. Fairley coming up, single his first time at bat. So the Dodgers have jumped off to a three-run lead against Bunning here in the third. The pitch swung on a pop-up on the infield. Out goes Tony Taylor in the outfield grass now and makes the catch and the side retired. But Fairley pops up after Willie Davis hit the home run. Three runs, two hits, and none left on. And the score at the end of two and a half innings of play, the Dodgers three and the Phillies nothing. Catch to Kofax, swung on and missed strike three. So two out, and Maury Wills the batter. Maury Wills struck out and flied to left. Wills had an infield single in five trips in the first game. So he's one for seven on the afternoon. Johnson at third, Parker at first. Euchre in a crouch, and Bunning set at the belt. The pitch to Will swung on and fouled away on one. Dodgers scored three times in the third on a walk, a steal, and a base hit by Schofield, followed by a home run by Willie Davis. Now here in the fourth inning, Lefevre's double, a bun single by Johnson, and a scoring fly ball by Roseboro, adding another. On one, the count to Maury Wills. 
Bunning back to the plate. Fastball, a high chopper over the mound. Dick Grote charging, short hops, throws, gets him. An excellent play by Grote. For the Dodgers in the fourth, they settle for a run on two hits, one error, and two left. And the score at the end of four and a half, uh, three and a half, four nothing Dodgers. Say, have you heard about it? The excitement over the new 67 Chevrolets, the beautiful sweeping changes. Well, every model, Chevy 2, Corvette South. Bottom of the fourth inning, four to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Vic Grote, Richie Allen, and Harvey Keene, and Sandy Koufax scraping at the dirt in front of the rubber. Looks in to get his sign. Dick Grote singled in the first inning. Koufax ready and delivers. Fastball high, ball one. Sandy for the first time in three innings. Staggered out there in his follow through, and he does that when he's trying to force himself to get a little something extra on the pitch the first time he's done it. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way. High again, ball two. So the first two pitches of this inning, Koufax has shown that he is forcing a little. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Grote. High, ball three. Three balls and no strikes. The count to Dick Grote. Kovacs ready in the 3-0 pitch to Grote. Fastball in there. 3-1. and one. Three and one to Dick Grote. Sandy back to the plate. Fastball in there. Grote faking that it was inside. Started the top to first, but just took one step. A full count to Dick. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Dodgers four runs, five hits, and no errors. The Phillies no runs, two hits, and one error. Here's the 3-2 pitch on the way. Fastball fouled away. Back of the plate and out of play. Dinner time in Philadelphia, and the Dodgers are hoping it is that time. Koufax, taking a breather, lifts his cap, runs his fingers through his hair, now puts it back. Goes to the rosin bag. A full count to Dick Grote. Sandy's 3-2 pitch. Fastball, ground ball to the left of Wills. Morey has it run up his arm. Wills, in going after that ball, was very unsure from the moment it was hit. He went over to his left, but he was really letting the ball play him. So... Whatever it was, he's going to draw another error. But he really let the ball play him. So Wells draws an error. Grote is aboard. And the batter is Richie Allen. Allen struck out in the first inning. Leading four to nothing, Koufax has Parker back of the runner as Allen swings and doesn't get it. With runners at first and second and one out in the first inning, Koufax really had to rear back against Allen. And he blew him down with a fastball. Richie 0 for 1. Sandy set delivers. Fastball swung on and missed strike two. Boy, you talk about Horatio at the bridge. It's Koufax on the mound. Oh and 2 to Richie Allen. Koufax on the rubber and delivers. Curve inside at the knuckles. One and two. Sandy again ready, set at the belt. One, two pitch on the way. Curveball got him swinging, and he really broke off a dandy. That thing was down in the dirt at Allen's feet. Although when Richie started to swing, it looked like he was going after a strike. So Kovacs breaking off a fine curve to strike out Richie Allen for the second time. And the batter is Harvey Keene. So Allen has had two trips against Sandy. Struck out on the fastball and now the curve. And here's Keene. Of course, Sandy would just as soon not strike out too many today. 
make too many pitches and he remember he's just off a game where he struck out 13. Koufax delivers fastball swung on and missed on one flip down to first not in time as Grote went back to the bag. Roseboro trying to nail Grote and Dick grinning as he looks down at Roseboro as if it's a shame on you. Roseboro has quite a move as he flicks the ball down to Parker. Keen takes inside one and one. Dodgers leading four to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Dodgers are trying to save the Giants all the trouble and bother of going to Cincinnati. 1-1 pitch. Fastball hit in the air to right field. Fairly moving over near the foul line. And fair ground makes the catch for the second out. So Keen trying to go the other way. Flies to right. Two out on the batter, Tony Taylor. Tony Taylor struck out on the second. Right hand hitting second baseman. Grote at first, Parker back of him, guarding the foul line. Four runs, five hits, and an error for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and an error for the Phils. Kopax delivers, fastball fouled away, 0-1. Sandy trying to win his 27. Kofax back of the rubber. 0 and 1 to count to Taylor. Now Kofax ready. Kicks and back to the plate with a slow curve. Hit even slower up along third. Tough play. Schofield can't make the play. Wisely elects to hold on to the ball rather than risk throwing it away. So a little number up along third base for an infield single for Tony Taylor. And the batter will be Bill White. Kofax has allowed three hits. Two of them, slow rollers, inside third, one a high bouncer. And the third hit was a chopper down to short, charged by Wills, but he was unable to handle it. Bill White struck out in the second inning. Kofax starts him with a fastball, fouled away, 0-1. Young Rick Wise begins to loosen up in the Philadelphia bullpen. If they get to Bunning spot, of course, they'd hit for him, so Wise getting ready. Rick beat the Dodgers his last time out. Strike one pitch, fastball swung on and missed strike two. 0 and 2 to Bill White. Right back up to the plate. Koufax looks into Roseboro. Grode away from second. Taylor from first. Curveball swung on and missed in the dirt. So Roseboro has to pick it up and throw to first for the out. And Bill White is still standing at home plate. He tried to hold his swing on a curve in the dirt two feet in front of the plate. So White strikes out. That is the fifth strikeout for Sandy. White drops his bat and is still in the batter's box. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. Jackie Brandt wants to give White his glove and Bill didn't want it. Now he finally has to take it and go slowly down to first base. At the end of four, four nothing Dodgers, here's Jerry. Euchre waiting, Koufax with a new ball, picks up the rising bag, just drops it to the left. Sandy into his windup and the 2-2 pitch on the way. Fouled away. All throughout the first game as we would pass along to you the Western Union reports of what was going on at Forbes Field. The Dodger dugout was kept apprised on every pitch in every situation and it was quite interesting to sit up here and watch the boys down there going through the torments of a pennant race. And as they got closer and closer, and then suddenly had it pulled away. 2-2 pitch to Euchre, swung on and missed strike three. Six strikeouts for Koufax. One 
One out, and here is Gary Sutherland from Glendale. He was 22 a couple of days ago on the 27th of October of uh, September. His dad played in the Cardinal system from 35 to 39, and his brother is Darrell, who is with the Mets. Gary Sutherland, even six, 175 pounder, played his first year professionally last year. He takes a strike. He's basically a second baseman, listed as infielder, but they figure he can do the job there. Strike one pitch on the way. Gary takes a curve outside, one and one. Four to nothing, Dodgers, bottom of the fifth inning. At dusk in Philadelphia, it's almost straight up six local time. One one pitch, fastball swung on and missed, one and two. It's tough enough to hit against anybody late in the game, but how'd you like to be Gary Sutherland? You got to the ballpark, oh, eight hours ago. You haven't done a thing, and now they say, go on up there, young man, and swing a little against Colfax. At twilight, when the lights are not taking complete effect, one and two the count. Roseboro out to talk to Sandy. Sutherland comes up with the reputation of being a pretty fair hitter. One and two to Gary. Sandy ready in the one-two pitch. Fastball hit the left field. Fading on it is Johnson a bit and makes the catch for the out. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. 50,000 watt clear channel station, KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony Incorporated. Bottom of the fifth inning, two out. Dodgers leading four to nothing, and Jackie Brandt, the batter. Right hand hitting center fielder. Single to short and fly to right. One for two. Roseboro sets a target. Koufax tries to hit it with a fastball, and it's a ground ball to Lefebvre, who's on his right knee to glove it and throws Brandt out. Well, Koufax, a relatively easy inning as he retires the side in order. And so the score at the end of five. The Dodgers, four runs, five hits, and one error. And the Phillies, no runs, three hits, and one error. Koufax has struck out six men with a bat left-handed. All right, Koufax up there with two out and two on. Four-nothing Dodgers in the sixth. In the bottom of the sixth, Rojas, Grote, and Allen for the Phillies. Wise a very deliberate stretch, set and delivers, and Kopax takes a strike, and it popped out of Yuka's glove on one. Wise again ready, Kopax waiting. Strike one pitch to Sandy. is swung on. A ground ball to the left of Grote. He one-hands it. Goes to the bag just ahead of the sliding Parker. So Grote takes a hit away from Colfax. And the Dodgers thwart it in the sixth. No runs. A hit two left at the end of five and a half innings. Dodgers four. Phillies nothing. The Union Oil Song in Dixieland. Royal 76 Premium Gasoline. It's powerful enough to make a difference in your car. Union Oil blends eight powerful fuels at the refinery into one powerful premium. Royal 76. Powerful enough to make a difference. Seventy-six from Union Oil. Bottom of the sixth inning, four to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Sandy Koufax still has a long way to go. He needs eighteen more outs. Uh, I'm getting punchy. Twelve more outs. 
He's getting ready now. Cookie Rojas, Dick Grode, and Richie Allen in that order. So four more innings for Koufax. Sandy coming back after a tremendous performance against the Cardinals when he allowed one run and a home run to Kurt Flood and struck out 13. And now here he is, having allowed only three hits through five innings and having struck out six. Rojas sacrificed and lined to short, 0 for 1. So Sandy looks into Roseboro, and here he goes again. Left hand to Ruddy in the pitch to Cookie. Fastball popped up. Back of the bag at second. Lefevre on the grass. Falling and waiting, and makes the catch for the out. One away. Dick Grote has an infield single and was aboard on the error. Grote, one for two. Grote making a nice play on Koufax's ground ball to end the sixth inning. Now Dick up here in the bottom of the sixth. The Union Oil Company of California sending you some kind of day, as the players say, from Pennsylvania. Curb to Grode over for a strike. Sandy, ready again. A strike one pitch on the way. Slow curve in there. Strike two. Boy, he still has good stuff. Oh, and two. Sandy slips the glove, dries his hand, pulls at his sleeve. Now he's ready again. And the strike two pitch to Grote. Slow curve that stayed high. Ball one. One and two. Sandy into his windup. And the one two pitch to Grote. Breaking ball. Punched foul off to the right of the plate upstairs. And out of play. Richie Allen, waiting his turn. Sandy checking into his windup and the one-two pitch on the way. Fastball fouled away. So after lulling Grote with a lot of slow curves, he tried to zip the fastball by him and Dick fouled it back. Still one and two. Sandy's 1-2 pitch, fastball got him swinging, and so Dick Grote becomes the seventh strikeout victim for Koufax. That means he has struck out 20 men in his last 14 innings. 14 and two-thirds. Here is Richie Allen, who has struck out twice. Allen in the first ball game had two hits. He went two for four. He takes a slow curve away. Ball one. One and oh. Sandy comes back to the plate. One oh to Allen. Fastball a little high. Ball two. Two and all the count. Dodgers sitting back in the dugout. Four or five of them standing up at one end. Most of them just sitting back watching Koufax. Sandy's 2-0 pitch to Richie Allen. Fastball fouled away upstairs. 2-1. 2 and 1 to Richie Allen. Sandy into his windup. Back he comes. Fastball, a half swing, but he held up. Three and one, the count to Richie Allen. Be a lot of tired ball players when this is over, but the Dodgers are hoping to be happy and tired. Three one pitch to Allen. Fastball, foul back, three and two. Three and two, the count to Richie Allen. One out, now two here in the sixth as Rojas popped up and Grote struck out. Sandy trying to retire the side. Koufax ready in the three-two pitch to Rich Allen. Fouled away, upstairs behind the plate.
we try to find out what the Giants were doing. What would you do in that situation? Do you just sit or do you move around? Do you read or what? But all communication with Forbes Field shut down for the night. Koufax rocks into his windup, 3-2 pitch, swung on and fouled away. Roseboro got that down off the foot. The Giants, of course, have to wait for the outcome of this game to make their decision as to whether to go to Cincinnati or not. Three and two to Richie Allen. Koufax ready and delivers. Fastball got him swinging. That's the third time he struck out Richie Allen. Eight strikeouts for Koufax, and he has turned in another magnificent performance through six innings. And what really makes you arch your eyebrows about it, he's coming back on two days rest after striking out 13. The end of six, four to nothing, Dodgers. Well, I'd like to remind all you folks, it's like a foul, it drops untouched. White over to pick it up on one hop. Lefevre, one of the better bunters on the team. He has bunted for a sacrifice nine times. And now Walter Olson comes out of the Dodger dugout hollering to Lefevre. And Jimmy walks away from the plate to hear what the manager wants. Lefevre and Austin have a little meeting halfway between home plate and the dugout. And now Jimmy comes back up to the plate. Fairly at second base. Nobody out. Wise leans in, checking with Bob Euchre. Now the right-hander up on top and goes to a stretch. Looks at Fairley in the 1-1 pitch. Lefevre takes outside as he faked a bunt. Ball two, two and one. Two and one. Wickwise up on top again. This is probably his last inning of work. The pitch to Lefevre bought it up along third. He makes Allen come in to field it. The throw to first pulls Taylor off the bag and fairly down to third. So Richie Allen will be charged with an error as he handles the bunt, but his throw pulled Taylor off first base. No sacrifice for Lefevre, but he is safe on the error. Runners at first and third, nobody out. And the batter, Lou Johnson. Dodgers leading four to nothing, trying to pick up more. The pitcher's spot is due up first when the Phillies hit in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Darrell Knowles, a left-hander, loosening up in the Philadelphia bullpen. Lou Johnson has popped up, bunted for a base hit, and then singled off the glove of Richie Allen. So Lou is two for three. Wise up on top, checking the runners. Now the pitch to lose. Swung on, a little looper down to Grody. Catches it on the fly and doubles up Lefevre. Jimmy apparently must have thought the ball bounced because it wasn't that deceptive a play, but he was caught halfway to second base. So two out. And the batter, Johnny Roseboro. Here is Roseboro, popped up at a scoring fly ball and fly to center. So it is still four to nothing, Dodgers. Rick Wise ready in the pitch to John, a ground ball hit down to Tony Taylor, and he boots it, and the run comes over anyway. So Tony Taylor charging the ground ball, kicked it for an error as he tried to hurry the play. Roseboro is aboard, and the Dodgers lead five to nothing. Actually, what has happened sometimes to the Phils in trying so hard against the Pirates, Dick Grote made a couple of big errors. And instead of just playing the normal game, actually the Phillies, even though they're out of the race, are trying extra hard, it would seem, and sometimes are drawn into committing errors. The Pirates and the Giants made five errors today. The Dodgers made three errors in the first game. Parker takes high, ball one. 
So everyone feels the pressure, even if you are not personally involved. And the Phillies committing two errors here in the eighth inning. Five nothing Dodgers in the eighth. The strike one pitch Parker takes outside. Roseboro holding at first base. One and one to count. Five runs, seven hits, and an error for the Dodgers. No runs, four hits, and three errors for the Phillies. Wise on the rubber. Now Rick goes to his stretch. Roseboro takes the lead in the one-one pitch high to Parker. Ball two. Two and one. Six outs stand between the Dodgers and the National League pennant. Two and one, the count to Wes Parker. Wise ready and delivers, and the pitch is low. Ball three, three and one. Three and one, the count to Wes Parker. Young Rick Wise set, delivers, and West takes slow curve over for a strike. Three and two. So with a full count and two down, Johnny Roseboro ready to go from first base. Bob Euchre in a crouch behind the plate. Rick Wise up on top and goes to his stretch. Right hand already, 3 2 pitch. Parker fouls it away. The Phillies won the first ball game 4 to 3. The Giants battling the Pirates in overtime, one going away 7 to 3. And the Dodgers now in the eighth inning leading 5 to nothing, trying to do it themselves. Rick Wise in relief have started Jim Bunning, who went five innings and gave up four runs. Wise checking Roseboro. 3 2 pitch. Parker whacks it foul down in the right field corner, curling out of play upstairs. Well, they'll try it again, 3 and 2. Parker pulling a curve. Parker waiting three and two. Sandy Kopax kneeling in the on deck circle. Runner goes, pitches swung on and missed strike three. So for the Dodgers in the eighth inning, they settle for one run, one hit, two errors, and one left. And the score at the end of seven and a half innings, the Dodgers five and the Phillies nothing. Say there's a lot of excitement at Union Oil Service Station these days. You know your Union Oil dealer is ready with ready money to give to you in Union Oil's big new 76 jackpot game. You know you could hit the jackpot and win $1,000 just like that. Or you might win one of the $100, $20, $10, $5, or $1 cash prizes. All you do is pick up a 76 jackpot ticket every time you stop at your participating Union Oil Station. Save these jackpot tickets. Each one has two halves with various jackpot symbols on it. When you get two halves that match, you have a winner. Thousands of 76 jackpot tickets pay cash to you immediately right in the Union Oil Station. So get in to see your Union Oil dealer for those valuable jackpot tickets. You can win as many times as possible. There's no obligation, nothing to buy. This is the easiest jackpot game you'll ever play, and you might walk off with $1,000 in cash. Jerry, it's only window dressing, but there were other games today. Can you bring us up to date on them? I think so. <laughs> uh, Vinny, a uh, final score in the first game of the doubleheader. Houston beat New York 6-1, to one, and it is now 8-2 to two in favor of Houston in the second game, trying to sweep the Mets. Atlanta closed it out, beating Cincinnati 4-2. to two. St. Louis beat Chicago 2 to nothing. And in case you haven't heard, San Francisco beat Pittsburgh 7-3 to three in 11 innings. Baltimore over Minnesota, 6-2. to two, No score of the second game at the end of six. Finals, Kansas City, 7, and Detroit, 5. New York, 2, Chicago, nothing. And Cle California Angels beat Cleveland, 2 to nothing. So the Angels wound up on a happy note. That's it, Vinny. Okay, Jerry. Bottom of the eighth inning, 5 to nothing Dodgers. And Sandy Koufax in the gloaming here in Philadelphia. 
waiting for the pinch hitter, Johnny Briggs, to get squared away. Briggs, left-hand hitting center fielder, who played a fine game, went two for five in the first game, will lead it off. Sandy starts him with a fastball, inside, ball one. Next one swung on and missed. Koufax now trying to get a half a dozen outs. In the Dodger bullpen, Phil Regan and Ron Paranowski. Pitch swung on and missed by Johnny Briggs. One and two to count. Sandy comes back to the plate. One, two. Fastball a little high. Ball two. Two and two. 23,000 came by to see the doubleheader today. Oh, they saw a wild first game, and they heard about an even wilder game over at Forbes Field. 2-2 two, two pitch, just outside, ball three, three and two. Here's the full count pitch to Johnny Briggs. Fastball fouled away to the roof and out of the ballpark. The lights are now starting to take effect because it's beginning to get darker in Philadelphia. We no longer have that bright sunset sky as we get closer and closer to evening. Kofax into his windup and the 3-2 pitch is a little high, ball four. And so Johnny Briggs draws the first walk from Kofax and it comes in the eighth inning. From here on in, every move that Koufax makes will be under close inspection from the bench. He's got to get six outs after going nine innings and striking out 13 and now working on two days rest. Sandy set at the belt, delivers to Jackie Brandt inside, ball one. For the first time, he starts to hunch his shoulders as if he's having troubles. One and all the count. Regan and Paranowski in the bullpen. Sandy set at the belt. 1-0 pitch to Brandt. Fastball hit to center field. It's playable. Willie Davis is there waiting and makes the catch. All right. Five outs to go. Cookie Rojas, the batter. Rojas, sacrifice, lined to short and popped up. 0 for 2. Kofax pulling at the belt. Roseboro taking plenty of time before he goes back into a crowd. It's been a long day for John back at that plate. Now he goes down into the crowds. Kofax on the rubber, looks over at Briggs and not holding him, and the fastball is inside to drive Rojas back. One and oh to Cookie. One out in the eighth. Five nothing Dodgers. Kofax delivers, fastball fouled away. That'll carry just about to the roof. One and one. One and one to Cookie Rojas. Kofax set at the belt. Now Sandy ready in the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fastball fouled away. Upstairs into the crowd behind home plate. One and two the count. Sandy straddling. Rojas waiting. Now Kofax delivers. Curve down at Rojas' feet. Two and two. The so Sandy working on Rojas, one out in the eighth, five nothing Dodgers, five outs away. Two two pitch on the way, fastball, pop foul, back of the plate. Roseboro coming back after it, comes to the backstop screen and can't get it as he drapes himself over the public address announcer's desk in a vain effort to catch it. Nice try by Roseboro, and it remains two and two. John earlier today, without even slowing up, went charging right into the Dodger dugout, a half a dozen men catching him, preventing injury. 
but this is the day for those heroics, the last day of the season, battling for a pennant. Two and two, the count to Rojas. Kofax set, and Sandy delivers. Fastball popped up, this one's playable. Schofield is calling, waiting as Kofax directs traffic, and Dick makes the catch. Two out. Four outs to go for Kofax. Whenever we think of a pop fly and somebody waiting, always remember the story fairly told about Jim Gilliam on a high pop fly with the runners going and the ball game in the balance and Fairley's waiting for the ball and Gilliam goes out and says, lots of room, lots of room, and just as Fairley's about to catch it, he said, don't get hit on the head. <laughs> Here's Dick Grote, infield single, a board on an error, and struck out. One for three. Sandy starts him with a fastball, fouled away, off to the right of the plate and out of play. 0-1, oh the count to Dick Grote. Sandy Koufax trying to win his 27th victory. He is four outs away from that. Set at the belt and delivers. Fastball foul back by Grote on a half swing. The Union Oil Company of California, happy to spend most of Sunday with you. Kofax back of the rubber, working on the ball, Groat waiting. Johnny Briggs, hands on his hips, standing at first base with two out on the eighth, five nothing Dodgers. Kofax set. Strike two pitch, curve just inside, <laughs> and it popped out of Roseboro's mitt, and Grote reacted and caught the ball in midair, then realized it was very much alive with the runner at first, and he dropped it back into Roseboro's mitt, and Dick is embarrassed. He is 20 feet away from the plate, and he's embarrassed. <laughs> After all the years he'd been playing baseball, he reacted instinctively on a pitch that popped out of Roseboro's mitt, and he caught it, with his teammate at first, and it didn't take him long to realize what he had done. And like a hot potato, he flipped it right back to Roseboro. Okay, he's at the plate. Kofax set, one, two pitch to Grote, fastball fouled away, off first and out of play. Five nothing, Dodgers in the eighth, two out. Sandy working on a new ball. Richie Allen on deck. Regan and Paranoski stopped throwing in the Dodger bullpen and just standing there watching. Now Sandy set. One, two pitch on the way. Fastball inside under the elbows. Ball two, just to drive Grote back. Sandy's 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball, a ground ball to Wills. He has it underhand to Lefevre ahead of Briggs. So there are three outs left between the Dodgers and that golden day that they've been dreaming about since February. And it's Sandy Koufax, head down, slowly walking over to the dugout, where Bill Bueller will meet him and wrap him up. For Philadelphia in the eighth inning, no runs, no hits, a man left. Eight innings are in the books. The Dodgers, five runs, seven hits, and an error. The Phillies, no runs, four hits, and three errors. The Union Oil Company of California, happy to have sent it all to you every bit of the way from those early kind of lazy days in spring training when the games really didn't mean anything except for the ball players involved, then to the excitement of opening day, and then the roller coaster ride from the tops of joy right down to the bottoms of disappointments and frustrations throughout a great and exciting year. And now we're going to the ninth inning of the final day of the regular season. For all of us connected with the ball club, I'd like to express our appreciation and thanks for your consideration of us and our work all year. Thank you for your letters and notes of praise. Thank you for your criticisms. Thank you for your interest. Above all, we're delighted that you're along for the ride, and we're delighted the Union Oil Company could bring it to you. We'd like to remind you that although the baseball season is due to end today, the regular part of it, that is, 
if the Dodgers can hold on to this lead. And in this kind of a race, you don't walk away from anything. But starting tomorrow on KFI in Los Angeles, the 76 Sports Special will hit the air. Jerry and I will be doing it all winter long to keep track of first the World Series and then, of course, professional football and collegiate football, all the sports. So I hope you'll make it a habit to join us at 5.30 Monday through Friday on KFI. The ovation in the background for one Sanford Kopax. He is three outs away from leading the Dodgers out of the wilderness today. They were lost in the woods there in the first game. Kopax swings and doesn't get it on one. Sandy has struck out twice, hit into a force play. Darrell Knowles now pitching. Left-hander Ruddy and delivers fastball, swung on and missed, 0-2. So another 32, another young left-hander by the name of Darrell Knowles. Oddly enough, was originally signed by the Baltimore Orioles. Finishing up for the Philadelphia Phillies. The strike two pitch, fastball outside, ball one. Darrell Knowles, along with Jackie Brandt, came to the Phillies in a deal with Baltimore for Jack Balchin. Here's the one-two pitch. Outside, ball two. So whether they realize it or not, here in the waning moments, the last regularly scheduled game of the year, the Dodgers are looking at a pitcher originally signed by the Baltimore Orioles. Here's the two-two pitch. Fastball swung on and missed strike three. So Tofax strikes out, goes back to the dugout to get some rest, gets an ovation from the people around the dugout. And the batter will be Maury Wills. Maury Wells going all the way at shortstop. In fact, for the Dodgers today, the same lineup going all the way with the exception of the pitcher spot, of course. Wills swings and doesn't get it. On one. So it was Wills and Schofield, Willie Davis and Fairley, Lefebvre and Johnson, Roseboro Parker, and in the second game, the name Koufax. The pitch to Wills is low. One and one. The Dodgers were hoping to present Koufax with a day off today but it was not to be. And as they had so often done in the past and had to do again today, they had to rely on him to get matters straightened out. The 1-1 one, one pitch, a little low, ball two, two and one. Five nothing Dodgers, ninth inning. When the Phillies come up in the bottom of the ninth, they have Richie Allen, Harvey Keene, and Tony Taylor. Those three men stand between the Dodgers and the National League pennant. 2-1 pitch, bounced in the dirt, goes all the way to the backstop. Ball three. Three and one to Maury. Will's waiting, three balls, one strike. Darrell Knowles, the third Philadelphia pitcher, Jim Bunning, Rick Wise, and Darrell Knowles.